Hi guys, back again. Uh, this time I'm going to talk again a little bit about some small still water tactics. We're still sort of in small still water season. We're in the sort of final countdown now to the rivers opening back up again. Um, but at the minute, the weather's still pretty grim. Uh, and most of, of my fishing in particular is going to be concentrated on small still waters within the local area. So, I'm going to talk a little bit about pulling tactics for things like this. So, for the nasty stuff. Uh, weighted lures, blobs, worms, all sorts of stuff like that. Now, what you really need to try and think about is that pulling, or you know, pulling lures, is not really or shouldn't really be a mindless exercise. And unfortunately, what you tend to see is that a lot of anglers, they will approach pulling in a, in a very, very mindless manner. Now, the best way to think about, about pulling techniques is in terms of take generation, or more accurately, chances of a take generation. And the more chances you can generate every single cast, Technically, the more takes you're going to get and the more fish you're going to catch over the course of either, you know, a 45 minute bank fishing session or an eight hour fishing day or all over the course of a whole season. It's going to catch you more fish by thinking through what you're actually doing when you're pulling your flies. Now, there's two ways that you can maximise your take generation. One of them is just out and out work rate. Now, all that means is you make the maximum number of casts, you pull it back as fast as you can, and then you make another cast. So you're generating chances by repetition. You get a chance when the fly hits the water from an impact take, the fly lands. Sometimes the fish react to it when it hits the water. You rip it back fast, so it's going past, in theory, a lot of fish. So you get in the, the chance of an aggression take by pulling it past the face of a lot of different fish. Um, and obviously because you're fishing fast, you've got a fast pace to your fishing, you're getting a lot of chances, a lot of, a lot of impacts, a lot of pulls, a lot of impacts, a lot of pulls. It's repetition. Now that type of pulling tends to be very, very successful on big reservoirs where you're covering a lot of water. You've got a relatively high fish density and relatively speaking, a lower pressure on the fish because they're not seeing as many flies as typically they do in a small still water. So as this video is about small still waters in general, I'm going to talk a little bit more about the tactics and the application of maximising your chances in a small still water scenario. So when, when I turn up at a lot of my local small still waters, um, places like Chatton and Thrunton, both up here in Northumberland, um, typically the first thing I see is people will roll up to the bank, they'll hammer out a fast glass intermediate with a black lure or a white lure or a blob or whatever, and they'll just pull it back like this, like they're on a reservoir, for want of a better description. And if that doesn't work, they might change the colour of the fly or they might move. No, that approach over the course of a year will catch you a load of fish, particularly if you're always fishing behind the stocking wagon. And, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. If that's, if that's your approach, you're just going to fish on the days that the lake's been stocked, uh, when the fish are relatively easy to catch, that's fine. You're going to catch a lot of fish. Nobody's going to beat you up over it. But on the days when you're fishing when it's more difficult, that kind of approach is, is just going to bite you. Um, you are much, much better served by thinking about your fishing a little bit more. So, so typically, my approach when I, when I was going to be pulling lures in a, in a small still water would be this. I would turn up, I would always start off fishing at a relatively high line. So something like a slow intermediate at the, probably at the most, or a fast glass, and uh, starting high in the water column. That's because I don't want to immediately drop through the fish. I don't want to end up fishing below the cruising depth of the fish. As you remember in my, one of my earlier videos on small still waters, I said that fishing above the fish is generally more successful than dropping down and fishing below them. So I don't want to start too deep. I also don't want to cast too far. I want to start relatively short. The reason being, if I make a big long cast, by the time I get the fly back to the bank, 
everything's dropped in the water column. So I could actually miss them just because of the fact that I'm casting too far. So I will always start short and fish back high in the water to start off with. I'll start to work out in terms of distance as well. So I'll make a short cast, the next cast will be slightly longer, the next one after that will be longer still. So I'm covering the water in a, in a methodical way. I'm not going to blast 30 yards of line straight out if the fish are right under my feet. There's no need to. So I've got to work out first whereabouts they are. Once I've got it out there, and I'm starting to fish at sort of normal pulling distance, if you like, which is quite a long cast, um, I'm going to do some different things. Most of the anglers you see, they will throw it out and they'll pull it back. If they think the fish are a little bit deeper in the water column, they'll throw it out, they'll turn around and talk to the mate whilst it sinks. Now occasionally the line will go tight and they'll get a bonus fish. All well and good, it happens to everybody. But they're not concentrating, they're not fishing properly. One of the single best ways to increase the number of chances that you get when you're pulling is to fish the drop or to actively fish the drop. Now, a good friend of mine, Davy Parker, a lot of you guys all know him, uh, really superb angler, very, very good at fishing the drop. Um, and it's a method that he uses all the time to put lots of extra fish on the bank, particularly in competitions. And much the same that I, in the same way that I do. So how do you actively fish the drop? The way that I do it, and Davy might be different, um, I throw that fly out there, when it lands, you have to make sure that everything turns over in a straight line. You do not want the fly landing behind the fly line. If it does, you need to strip some line to get straight line contact. The most important thing with fishing the drop is contact to the flies. Now, as that fly is dropping, you need to maintain contact by a very, 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 very slow recovery of line just to keep the tension there, particularly if the wind's pushing towards you. As that fly drops, you can let it drop for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten seconds, whatever you whatever you feel like, and you can experiment with the length of drop. But the important thing is, as that fly is dropping, after a few seconds of drop, bump it. So what you've got there is you have a chance when the fly lands for an impact take, because everything landed straight. If you get an impact take or a reaction take, you feel it and you hook it. As it drops, the fish might pick it up then. If you're tight to it, you feel it and you hook it. After a few seconds of drop, if you bump the fly and kick it, a fish that's seen it and isn't sure, but then the fly suddenly moves, it takes the fly because you're in contact and you feel it. So straight away, I've got three chances there. The impact, the drop, and when I kick the fly. Somebody who throws that fly line out, turns around and talks to his mate, has got a half chance of maybe getting a lucky one as it sinks. So there's three times the chances already. When I start to retrieve that fly, and my retrieve can be anything, it can be slow, it can be fast, whatever you feel like, I will retrieve typically for about a third of the distance of the overall cast. But then I'll stop again and I'll allow that fly to start to drop and I'll repeat the process. Fly drops, I give it a kick, gives me another chance. Might let it drop a bit more, give it another kick, then go back into my retrieve. And I'll often do that three, and very occasionally, four times in every single cast. Again, that is massively increasing, or massively generating chances for me to get a take and catch a fish. As I come to the end of the retrieve, Again, one of the massive, massive mistakes that I see people make is they don't hang the fly. People seem to think that hanging a fly is a thing for boat fishermen. Hanging a fly when you're fishing off the bank is absolutely paramount. One of the single biggest features in that lake is the bank you're standing on because it's got a shelf, it's got a slope, and a lot of these fish patrol the edges. So typically, if I take you from start to finish with a cast, just to sort of emphasize how many chances I'm trying to generate every single cast, it goes something like this. Throw the line out, strain it up. Impact take is a good chance, that's one chance. 
letting it drop, that's a second chance. Bump the fly as it drops, that's a third chance. Go into my retrieve, fourth chance, because I'm retrieving, I'm moving the fly through a lot of fish. Stop. As fly starts to drop, that's my fifth chance. Bump it, give it quite a sharp movement again to lift it, that's my sixth chance. Go into my retrieve, it's my seventh chance. Let it stop and drop, bump it again, eight, nine. Go into my retrieve, ten. Come to the end of the retrieve, go up on the hang, that's eleven. Bump it, twelve. Bump it, bump it, bump it, thirteen, nothing there. Roll cast it out, throw it back out again, do it again. You turn up and bang it out, you're doing this. Straight out, turn around, talk to your mate, half a chance. Pull it all the way back. Yeah, you've got 10, 15, 20, 30 yards of chance where you're pulling it past the fish. If you don't want it pulled, you've got no chance. Rip it out the water, miss the hang. Maybe occasionally a fish will swirl it as you pull it out. You swear, oh, it's bad, you know, bad luck, I should have had that one. You're just robbing yourselves of chances every single cast. So, so really what I'm trying to get over is when you pull in on a small still water, think about what you're doing and think about it in terms of generating as many chances on every single cast. Yes, it takes a little bit more effort and it takes a little bit more conviction, but trust me, over the course of a season, it will pay you absolute dividends versus the throw it out and pull it back and hope it goes tight. Some days that works, a lot of times it doesn't. Anyway, I hope that's been of some use for you. Um, like I said, hope I see you out on the bank and if you've any, if you've any got any questions anytime and you see me out there, come over, I'll always uh, try my best to give you a few pointers. Anyway, hope that it was some use to you guys and I'll catch you later. Thanks a lot.